So everybody's been getting all steamed up over this tyrannical ATF pistol brace rule, and so they should be. But the fact of the matter is, is that we should not even be in a position to where we need to get steamed up over something like this. Hey guys, welcome back to Show Me Firearms, and yes, today we're going to be talking about the ATF's tyrannical pistol brace rule. Now, of course, there's been a ton of content already put out there by gun tubers and other people in the Second Amendment world, but today I wanted to talk about something that I'm not really hearing that many other people talk about. So let's get into it. We shouldn't even be in a position to where we're having to fight a tyrannical edict like this ATF pistol brace rule. And if you want to take it one step further, I don't think that pistol braces should even have to be a thing. So how do we get to this point? How do we get to this point where you cannot put a rifle stock on a rifle that has a barrel shorter than 16 inches, creating the necessity for pistol braces. Let's go back in time and retrace our steps so we can see exactly how we got to this point in 2023. Let's go back in time to the 1930s. Now it was during this time period that you had gangsters running around all over the place. Guys like John Dillinger, Al Capone, Bonnie and Clyde to name a few, and they were causing just absolute chaos and mayhem everywhere they went. Now in response to this mayhem that the gangsters were causing, the politicians at the time decided to blame the guns the criminals were using and not the criminals themselves. Huh, doesn't that sound familiar? So the politicians enacted the National Firearms Act, the NFA. Now under the NFA, you could not own an SBR, that is a rifle, with a barrel shorter than 16 inches. You could not own a sawed off shotgun or a machine gun unless you paid a $200 tax stamp to the government. Now $200 doesn't seem like very much in today's standards, but you gotta remember, this was during the Great Depression. $200 was equivalent to about $3,500 in today's money. Just an absolutely astronomical amount of money. So the NFA went into existence in the year 1934. Now the NFA is of course blatantly unconstitutional. And five years later, in 1939, the NFA was challenged in Miller versus United States. In that case, two men, Jack Miller and Frank Layton, were caught in possession of a sawed off shotgun. That is a shotgun with a barrel shorter than 18 inches. Now a federal district court correctly dismissed that case, citing the fact that the NFA is unconstitutional. After that, the Supreme Court picked up the case and overruled the federal district court and the NFA was solidified because as you guys know, once the Supreme Court rules on a case, it is very difficult to undo that ruling. Since 1939, gun control has steadily grown. There's been a bunch of other legislation that's gone into effect, a bunch of other court rulings that have contributed to where we find ourselves in in 2023. But probably the worst thing that could have ever happened to us occurred in 1972. That is the year when the ATF went into existence. If you guys didn't know, ATF stands for Always Taking Freedom. So since 1934, you could not own a rifle, let's say an AR-15, for example with a barrel shorter than 16 inches, unless you sold your soul to the government and paid that $200 tax stamp. In an effort to deal with this, companies began coming out with a thing called a pistol brace. Now, pistol braces look very similar to rifle stocks, but technically they're not rifle stocks. And for the longest time, the ATF was okay with pistol braces. So in other words, you could have an AR-15 with a 10 inch barrel and a pistol brace on it, and it was not considered an SBR by the ATF. They were perfectly okay with it. And for a while there, the ATF was flip-flopping back and forth on their stance on pistol braces. For a while there, they said, oh yeah, you can't actually shoulder it uh, because that is illegal. You only can rest your cheek on it. And then all of a sudden they said, oh no, it's okay, you guys, you, you, can, you can shoulder it if you want, that's fine, we're okay with that. 
And then a couple months ago, they said, uh, yeah, you know, pistol braces, uh, nah, we don't like those anymore. So yeah, you guys, either you need to destroy the brace, destroy the gun, turn the gun into us, or you can sell your soul to us and pay $200 and register the darn thing. So that's how we got to this point in 2023, where we're having a fight with the Bureau of Always Taking Freedom over pistol braces. Like I said in the intro, we shouldn't even be having this fight right now because you should be able to put a rifle stock on a gun that has a barrel shorter than 16 inches if you want to. The only reason why you can't is because of the NFA, which is totally unconstitutional. The second amendment says shall not be infringed. It is an infringement on the second amendment to say, oh, well, uh, yeah, if you wanna have a stock on a rifle with a barrel short than 16 inches, you gotta pay $200 to the federal government and fill out a bunch of paperwork. That is a blatant and direct violation of the second amendment. Therefore, the NFA has got to go. Get rid of it, abolish it. It needs to be gone yesterday. In the meantime, yes, we absolutely must fight this ATF pistol brace rule tooth and nail. We have to fight it until we kill it. But we can't lose sight of the grand prize, which is getting rid of the NFA once and for all. This pistol brace rule is just one serpent's head, if you will. So even if we win this battle and we chop that serpent's head off, another one's just gonna sprout up from the source, which is the NFA. It's time we go after the source. Defeat the NFA, get rid of it, abolish it, instead of just picking these smaller battles like this pistol brace rule, chopping that serpent's head off, and then another one sprouts up. Guys, we gotta go after the source. We have to kill the source once and for all. So how do we get rid of the NFA? How do we fight it? Now, I don't necessarily have the definitive answer to that, but I do have a few ideas of how we can try to get that ball rolling. I don't think we're gonna be able to actually officially abolish the NFA because the swamp in DC is just too big and too dark. I don't think we're gonna be able to get much of anything done there. I think that our battleground needs to be at the state level because guys, the states are supposed to have the majority of the power in this country, not the federal government. So we need to bring that power back down to the state level where it belongs. And what I think we should do is we need to have a bunch of states collectively with one loud and clear voice. Federal government, screw you, screw your NFA, screw your ATF. We don't care about your tyranny. Our citizens and our states are gonna be able to have the ability to put a rifle stock on a gun that has a barrel shorter than 16 inches and they will not have to file additional paperwork and they will not have to pay a tax stamp in order to do that. So I think that's how we fight the NFA. Again, we're not gonna be able to officially get it off the books, but I think it needs to be neutralized at the state level. Again, a bunch of states band together, one voice say, screw the NFA. If our citizens want to do this thing with the rifle stock and the uh, short barrel, they have the freedom to do that. Now if the states were to collectively with one voice tell the feds to go pound sand, the feds aren't just gonna sit around and watch it happen because they're too drunk on power. So they're gonna strike back. But how might they do that? There's a number of different ways that they might do that and it would take too long to go into all that in this video. But one way that I could potentially see the feds striking back against a group of states that stood up to them would be with money. Because the states are addicted to federal money, AKA federal cocaine, for things like highways and social security and Medicare and blah, 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 blah. The list goes on. The states are totally strung out on federal money. Now, if the feds were to pull their funding from some states that might not be acting the way the feds want them to, we, the people, need to ask ourselves, are we willing to suffer for the sake of greater freedom? As some inspiration, I think we should look at our founding fathers because they sure as heck were willing to suffer for freedom. They were actually risking death. Because like, let's say if George Washington had gotten caught by the British, yeah, he would not have lasted very long. So they were willing to suffer for freedom. That's a question that we need to ask ourselves in 2023. Are we willing to suffer? Are we willing to give up our comfortable way of modern life for the sake of freedom? And the answer should be absolutely, because we should totally be willing to suffer and to 
give up some of the modern comforts that we have in order to secure greater freedoms, not only for ourselves, but for the next generation and the generation after that. The founding fathers were willing to do that for us here in 2023. So we should be willing to do the same for the people who come after us. So that's where we find ourselves in 2023, having to fight a pistol brace rule and also the source of that pistol brace rule, the NFA. And in order to neutralize the NFA, the states need to tell the feds to go pound sand. And that will probably result in some suffering or discomfort for those of us who live in those states. And we should totally be willing to sacrifice a little bit so that we can have greater freedom, not only for ourselves, but for the next generation. So there you have it guys, that's my thoughts on this whole ATF pistol brace thing and why I think that the conversation we're having needs to be about more than just the pistol braces. It should be about the bigger picture, getting rid of the NFA or at least neutralizing it here at the state level. Now, what do you guys think about all of this. Sound off with your opinions in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and to check out my merch store. And until next time, show me them firearms. Now this is absolutely going to tick the government off. Kind of the whole point of the Second Amendment, and that's why we love it so much.